Welcome to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, bringing you double the inspiration and double the information. We are Better Together. Together. It's with Sandy Renner and Alexis V. Wolf. I am Alexis V. Wolf of the Fiery Sword Global Ministries. This is Sandy Renner of Sandy Renner Ministries. We are both ministers and authors. We counsel. So if you guys need anything, you can reach me at 803-238-5166. And my number is 803-417-5488. And listen, we want to thank Johnny McElveen for that incredible intro music. Beautiful. Uh, never want to be remiss uh, in thanking him. If you need a producer, if you need a musician, call Johnny McElveen of Columbia, South Carolina at 803-397-4931. All right, Sandy, we're back. And we're back. And we have been talking about relationships. It feels endlessly, but we have really only just begun. So last week, we talked about what it is to truly submit. Mm -hmm. We actually talked about the contrast between surrender and submission. So if you guys missed that video, I mean, if you missed that radio show, you could go to our YouTube channel, Sandy's or mine. Um, you can type in the Fiery Sword or sandyrenner.net. And you will find all of our previous yes. shows that are on video, which is really great. Um, but we've been talking about submission and what that looks like in marriage. And we are to submit one to another and what God has to say about that. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk today about healthy communication as that is vital as most people, if I may be so bold as to say, most people don't know how to healthy communicate. That's true. We have been talking about relationships for uh, nine to 10 weeks now. And Alexis' daughter said, are y'all still talking about relationships? <laughs> but the truth of it is that we were talking before the session, we were talking about relationships. The truth is everything is relational. Everything, everything God created is in relation to something. So we really need to learn to try to do relationships better. I mean, think about it. We have a relationship with the Father, I hope you do at least, and we have a relationship with one another, mm -hmm. with our spouse, with our children, with our families, with our extended families, with our workplace. I mean, the list goes on and on. Relation to the earth, how we, how we deal with the things of the earth that we've been given this planet. How do we relate to the animal kingdom? And you animal lovers out there, you love your little kitties and your little puppies, but do you relate to people as well as you do your, pl your plants or your pets? And so relationship is very, very intense and it's very, very serious to God. And we need to take it a little more seriously and be, we do. be nice, just mm -hmm. be nice to one another. But that begins in the heart. And so while we've been talking specifically about marriage for the last session and this one, uh, we're going to talk about submission and healthy communications. Boy, and I asked uh, the last session we did, could we send some of this material to our politicians? <laughs> I think it would help, maybe, but we certainly need to continue praying for them. Mm -hmm. I want to um, share something out of her book, is how to, no, it's Marriage Beyond Mediocrity. Marriage Beyond Mediocrity. Uh, you know, the word mediocre, I want to share what it means, and she, she gave this definition on page 39 of this book, it means average, commonplace. I don't think God can make anything average. No, I don't think so. You know, we've been talking a lot about we'd be glad when our society gets back to normal. I'm not sure normal was the best thing for us to be. Well, clearly it didn't work out. Uh, well. It didn't work out very well. And obviously God wants to change some things. Mm -hmm. But some of the synonyms for mediocrity is characterless, characterless, colorless, common, conventional, fair, humdrum. Seriously, folks, who wants to be humdrum <laughs> in anything? God did not create that. And you know, when he, he gave us his spirit, think about it. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in us. Mm, that, is that is extreme. There's nothing mediocre about that. And so uh, how do we communicate with others? Is it humdrum? I don't think so. We usually either syrupy sweet, which is phony. <laughs> Let's just be real, folks. Or it is um, nasty. And especially with our spouse. Now, myself, I've just, uh, I've only been married about a year and a half this time around. And um, so I am still learning 
how to rightly communicate with my husband because we're still kind of brand new at the game. And even though we're not brand new in the game of life, obviously, uh, we've got a lot of years behind us, but we're still learning how to communicate well mm -hmm. and how to uh, speak to each other. But if you've got a right basis, right foundation, and that's kind of what we did the last session, uh, Alexis talked a lot about Ephesians 5, and it really gives you a foundation for all right relationships. And so today we'll talk a little bit about healthy communication and what that looks like in in uh, practical application and how to submit to each other in practical application because we can get spiritual all day long <laughs> and she and I both know enough of the word and the Bible and preach and teach we can be very spiritual <laughs> but how do we do it in everyday life you know Monday morning everybody's late to work in school and the wash machine just will not spin out and someone's knocking on the door and you're in your house coat and hair up looking like Frankenstein's bride and and everything that can go wrong goes wrong. How do I behave myself? I am obviously a communicator. He obviously is not if you know him. I mean, yes, he can communicate. He has public jobs and so he's very quick to do that. But he's more the silent time. I'm more not. Y'all didn't know that, did you? <gasps> so when I communicate with Ray, uh, I can be very verbal. I can just continue talking and he's listening. I need to take a hint from that. I need to listen more, speak less. But I have learned that I need to say what I need to say simply, clearly, quickly, and give him time to process it. He will get back to me. He always gets back to me. Mm -hmm. So one is learning how each other works learning how we all have Function. differences mm -hmm. our functions are different our communication skills are differently we have different expectations uh, I expect him to answer me right away because that's what I would do and so mm -hmm. when I have these unhealthy expectations mm. then we become frustrated we become uh, angry and we'll respond out of that so what we need to learn to do is to Res actually this is a perfect one respect respect right. one another yeah. see we're not seeing a lot of that in our world <clears throat> around us alexis we don't see that in our news media we don't see it in the political parties we don't see it in school we don't see it in church we don't see it in homes uh, both of us do a lot of marriage counseling and one of the things i insist on if i'm going to um help you bridge your gap is you must be respectful of one another. Mm. I had one couple that just literally started blasting each other with ugly names. I got up, excused myself, and I went home. <laughs> I will not tolerate it. <clears throat> Disrespect just breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. Contempt breeds divorce. So we need to learn to uh, communicate. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about words. Words are extremely important in how we use them. And, and so in learning to communicate in a healthy way, you're going to have to learn how to use the language you have to promote one another and promote Christ. Mm -hmm. I said promote, not tear down, not be disrespectful, not show each other up and shame and gain and all that stuff. So we're talking about words. One of the scriptures says, let the words of my mouth mm. be acceptable to your Lord. You know, there's more to that scripture, but just think about that one line. Mm -hmm. Let the words of my mouth. Well, shouldn't I feel that way about the people that God have put me in um, relationship with? If it's important to God, then it's important in our relationship. Mm -hmm. If uh, I don't speak rightly to alexis you know what we're going to cease to be friends we're going to cease to be minister partners and then we're going to assist uh we're going to just uh fail at being good for the body of christ right so it's important it's vital that we learn to communicate and be respectful mm -hmm. treat one another with love and the whole thing we've been talking about all this communication and all of this relationship 
everything God does is ruled and measured by love. Yes, it is. Everything. Every single thing. So let's talk about some words. Let's talk about how to use words properly. Go ahead. No, no, you, yeah. you're on a roll. You hit it. Okay. I like to let Sandy talk. When she gets on a roll, it's like, I don't want to interrupt. Let's talk about some words. <laughs> wow. Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech always be gracious, mm. seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every mm -hmm. person. And that is valid in every area of Absolutely. life, not just marriage. Let your speech be gracious. Let your words produce grace, mercy. The you Bible know, says if you want to be shown mercy, you must give mercy. Yeah. I, I heard, was telling Sandy earlier that I had heard something probably 20 years ago, and I wish I could remember the minister that said it, but I heard some minister talking about relationships, talking about marriage, and he said, never fight below the neck. Wow. And I thought, what? Well, and listen, that's been 20 years ago, and that has still stuck with me because never speak out of emotionalism, which don't hit them. It's, some of you will say don't hit below the belt. Yeah. So it's kind of in, in a heart matter. Don't don't fight below the neck. In other words, don't say things that are going to crush someone don't in their heart and their spirit. Heart. That's exactly right. Stick to the facts. I love when Michael and I have discussion, which is very rare that Michael and I ever have a disagreement. We have, and even when we do, it's it's so it's so minimal. Um, because we've been we've been doing this this dance together a really long time, um, but there have been a couple issues in the 18 years we've been married. This one in particular thing, and boy, I, I hit below the belt. Mm. I hit below the heart. I mean, I hit wow. below the neck. So I, I stabbed him in his heart. I didn't mean to. I wasn't think, but I was. You know what I was thinking about me. Yes. When I am thinking about me and how I feel mm -hmm. and how I perceive something. And then, you know, I think the last segment, the last show, Sandy, we ended up with, we started talking about unrealistic expectations. Yes. And, and the thing about that is if we have, and we allow those unrealistic expectations to perpetuate and fester and really grow when it's something we think is real, when it's not real at yes. all, we will put a heavy weight on our husband or our wife yes. and expect them to measure up. Um, one of the things, I know we talked about um, this book, um, Marriage Beyond Mediocrity. Um, I talk a lot about how something that happened with Michael that seemed like something that happened with my first husband who abandoned me. And I wasn't thinking about my first husband, but the reaction came through because my, so my first husband, just to give you a little insight, my first husband would get, he would go silent for weeks and just not speak to me. Yes. He was that kind of a manipulative person to where not speaking to me, he knew that got under my skin and he would just not speak to me. And so Michael, my God ordained husband is a very, I said, I was going to let you talk Sandy, but I'm talking away. Okay. But as you said that it, it brought this up. But Michael's a very quiet man. And so <laughs> early in our marriage, we were friends a really long time before that, but uh, at some point I said to him, well, why are you so quiet? Um, do you not love me? Mm. And he's like, what are you talking about? Yes. And it was so funny because I had this unrealistic expectation yes. based on something that happened to me previously that he was quiet because he was mean and hateful. But so I expected that if somebody loved me, they would be talkative and they would be chatty and they would share their every hope and dream with me all the time. <laughs> because I listen, I'm a chatty person, standing here, a chatty person. Ray is quiet. Michael yes. is quiet. Yeah. Um, and so I had to, I had to seek Holy Spirit and go, okay, what is going on with me that that made me feel insecure that he was quiet? Well, he's yes. always quiet. He's been quiet as long as I've known him. That was not a sign of his lovelessness against right. me. It was a sign of that's his personality. But you said something very important. Don't miss this. She had to start looking inward, inward. at herself mm -hmm. and say, what is broken in me right that i would respond that way i want to go back to what you said about not fighting below the neck because something just clicked in my spirit speak on it think about the armor of god we have the armor of god we had the helmet of salvation don't even think about what other the breast of plate of righteousness and the shield don't even think about that for a moment just the helmet of salvation if i am only going to fight fair and i'm going to fight rightly and i'm going to fight not below the neck, then I see that helmet of salvation. My heart then should be to save you. Mm, profound. If I will look yeah. at her helmet of salvation, 
which is Jesus Christ. Then my heart should melt. My heart should be to save you. Not that we are the Savior, and I'm not meaning but, that. But I, even I, my heart is to save your Save you from hurt. Save you from shame. Because right. that's what submission is. It's protection. Me being right and me being right. mean and me being mean spirited. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to share something else. When Ray and I got married, a dear friend of his and now a great friend of mine, she gave me this beautiful bowl and it has the fruit of it and it has all the fruit of the spirit. And she gave me this little thing and she said, whenever you're going to fight or communicate together, make sure you do it through the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. and so i'm just going to read that very quickly to you i went ahead and marked it because i knew i was going to use it galatians 5 verse 20 but the fruit of the spirit what spirit the holy spirit mm -hmm. the one who abides in you if you are a believer but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace Patience, whoa, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, gentleness. self-control. Listen, if I can't fight with you in a right way and do it through love with the expectation of bringing some joy out of the situation, mm -hmm. if I can't do it in kindness, if I cannot show goodness, my goodness and your goodness and Christ's goodness, if I can't produce faithfulness to each other in the middle of that battle, if I can't do it with gentleness, mm, that's a big word, self and use self control. And I can't be patient. In other words, I can't give you a chance to speak, give you a chance to say, right. this is what I feel like. This is where I see that. And so then if it's all one sided, you probably need to breathe, <clears throat> shut up, breathe take a step back right when you are doing all of the talking then that should be an indicator in that moment that you probably saying more than the other person can or will comprehend so step back i love what the old medea shows medea <laughs> says put the shut to the up and there's times I have to remind myself with the, the shut, shut to, to the, the up. up. I love I don't it. ever I have to say it. that to Ray because he says so little because I'm saying so much. So then the problem is really not with him. The problem is with me. And I need to step back and say, wait a minute. Am I confident? What was my goal to start with? Was it just to prove I'm right? Or was it to really, truly try to resolve an issue? Right. And resolution really has to be the heart of every um uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're going to have a conflict, if you're going to embark upon an argument, what is the or purpose? a disagreement? What is your purpose? What is the purpose? And I said, listen, when I counsel people, everything they sell me, they'll go blah 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 blah, and they'll say other things. It's like, okay, what is your end game? Yes. What's what end is game? your end game? And so, if you are looking to hurt that person, put the shut to the up. Uh, put the shut to the because up. that is not your goal. Because again, it goes back to submission. Submission is an act of love. If I submit to my husband. And as Christ says, submit one to another. And, and, and Michael submits to me and we submit to Holy Spirit. Yes. We submit to Christ. Then our goal should always be to protect one another, even if we're angry, even if we are upset, even if we are offended. Yes. And that's a whole other conversation. We need to be uh, slow to offend. But Absolutely. that's a whole other uh, set of instructions. You know, you have a scripture here that uh, a lot of people use in their marriage ceremony. But not uh, First life. Corinthians 13, four through eight. Yes, we will recite this. We'll have it on a beautiful plaque, right. maybe beside the bride in our wedding gown. And it says, love is patient. There's that awful word again, patient. Mm -hmm. um, can I share what a friend of mine says patience is this. The ability to cooperate with God without complaining mm. when you don't know what he is doing say that one more time patience is the ability to cooperate with god without complaining mm. when you don't know what he is doing so love is patient and we said a moment ago everything about relationship god measures it through love love is his his measuring marker right so love is patient love is kind 
did we just read this in Galatians? I, I think it's Spirit. familiar. Uh -huh. Hello. Mm -hmm. It is not jealous. Uh-oh. There's a big one. Um, we're jealous, and jealousy can... He really is a green-eyed monster. We'll talk more about that in a little I think bit. we're going to have a whole radio show about On jealousy. jealousy. Mm -hmm. Love does not brag, and it is not arrogant. Mm -hmm. It is not prideful. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not scream at your husband to take out the trash. <laughs> yes, ladies, I'm beating us up. <laughs> it does not seek its own. In other words, it's my way or the highway. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it God's way. Mm -hmm. It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. Well, I got my list. Well, last oh, yeah. week, we used to call that sandbagging in cards. <laughs> uh, well, last week, you did this, this. Yes, I remember. I remember, and I've kept a list. Um, it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Mm. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes for all things. It endures all things. Love never fails. It, love does not keep a list. Never. Never. Never, ever, ever. And, you know, that goes back to forgiveness. We, we talked about that weeks and weeks ago about f when when we are beating ourselves up and, oh, God, will you forgive me? It's like, why are you asking God to forgive you? He already has forgiven you. He doesn't know what you're talking about. That is true love. The heart yes. of God is true true impenetrable love like yes. th there's nothing that's gonna that's gonna sever that love that's who god is and that is how we are to approach our spouses yes that if we are really looking out for the heart of christ we're going to look out for the heart of our spouse and if there is a disagreement and first of all what's all this fighting going on about anyway you know, in the body of christ there should be no quarrels we should not be quarrelsome we should not be um petty and how often, Sandy, do we in our marriages become so petty because hey. we didn't get our way? I talked to a young married couple many, gosh, many moons ago, probably 10 years ago. And they were so in love and they couldn't wait. Very young, early 20s. And they got married. And one of the first complaints this woman had, which I, I'm not knocking her because we all have complaints. I mean, yes. we've all had things. Um, but it was, it was kind of cute. And she said she was deliriously angry because he ate one of her Snicker bars out of the refrigerator. Well, if it was the Wait, last one, no, I can no. understand her pain. <laughs> but I laugh that she was serious. Yes, like as a I've heart attack, that. this woman was serious that after their honeymoon, he ate a Snicker out of the refrigerator. Those were her Snickers. It wasn't the last one, just they were hers. And she's like, I really had to get, and th these are godly people. They love the Lord. I mean, but she said she really struggled with him eating her snicker. I'm like, sweetheart, you've got a long road ahead of you. That's going to upset you. Absolutely. But listen, it happens. There are All things the that blindside us that like, we don't plan to be irritated and our husband or our wife will do something and we're irritated. It's just like that. And yes. it's just that fast. We are angry if we do not guard our hearts. Absolutely. If we don't remind ourselves that we are to submit one to another and that in that submission, we are to protect one another. I love that you said that the other week, Sandy, because that's what submission is. It is protective covering. So let me ask you a hard question. Hit it. If so it's too hard, I won't mean... answer. <laughs> <laughs> you might answer my own question. I know, right? So does that mean that we don't have a right to ever question one another? No. Or, or, no. or, or say, hey, I'd rather you didn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So to, to maybe talk about that. It's all bit. about how we approach the issue right yes if we are not to be quarrelsome if we're not to be petty it doesn't listen god god gave us emotions he gave us feelings right i mean so there's there's something valuable in our feelings the difference is we're not to be led by those feelings yeah so being able to go to your husband or your wife and say listen honey first of all calm yourself first second of all gather your intentions figure out what your intentions are is your intention to just slam your husband or your wife and say how dare you you're so stupid you know that's my space remember you're dead he or she is dead together you make one entity when you hurt your spouse you hurt yourself yes and that listen when we hurt 
this applies to the body of Christ. If I am one in Christ and Christ is one in me and I am one with Sandy because she is also one in Christ, we, the body of Christ, red, yellow, black, and white, across the globe, if I'm hurting another person in the body of Christ, I'm hurting myself because we are one. That is what oneness looks like. All this chaos going on right now in the world and we are hurting one another in the body of Christ because we can't agree politically. Yes. We are hurting ourselves. Likewise, in marriage, when I become one with my husband and he is one with me and we are one with Christ, if I hurt him, I hurt myself. Let me give you an example. Us as parents. Did I answer those, that right now? Yes, you did. Good. <laughs> those of us who are parents, um, you know, you can say what you want to to me. You can beat me up. You can do whatever you want to do. But you better leave my kids alone. Right? You better leave my youngins out of it. Right? Is that not yes, true? Yes, Lord Jesus. Well, how do you think God feels? Mm. How do you think God feels when I attack one of his sons or daughters and you say, well, they're not believers. So that gives you a right to be brutal to someone, mm. to cuss them, to call them names, to belittle them, to make less of them. You better remember God created them just like you. Mm -hmm. And so if we get all riled up about how you're going to treat my children, you better stop and think when I say something harsh or ugly or, or just disrespectful to my husband, I am speaking to God's son. Mm -hmm. I am addressing the very son of God who has the Holy spirit living in mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. um, we might want to talk to them just a little bit different. A little bit, a little bit. See that helmet of salvation. How can I save you from what I really wanted to do and bring out a better return? Because remember, you are your spouse and your spouse is you. Again, That's when nice. we can understand the I die, he dies, we become one together. If you are hurting them, if you annihilate them, you are hurting yourself if for no other reason but for self-preservation absolutely do not attack your spouse listen and we understand that marriages are not perfect we understand that not every person is married to a godly person you may be godly and your spouse is as unsaved as, as a doorknob mm. and we understand <laughs> that they may be an alcoholic we understand that they may be uh mean or first of all if there's violence step back do yes. not let someone brutalize you physically. Absolutely. But if we're just, we're talking about dissensions or, I mean, you're discord and, and you just disagree on certain things. Listen, there is a way to approach the ungodly as well as the godly. Absolutely. It all comes down to gentleness. I remember Smith, um, Smith Wigglesworth. I don't know how many of you guys know, you know who that is. I do. Right. Of course you do. Um, but he's an older uh, minister. Long story. Get his books. He's amazing. But before he came to know the Lord, he came, this man is a, I mean, this dude was profound in the word. He God. raised the dead. Profound. He came to Christ and I'm going to minimize the story, but the gist of it is, um, she wanted to go somewhere, I think to church or choir or something like that. And he locked her out and she sat on the porch, I guess all, all evening or how, I don't remember how long it was. I don't, I don't want to misquote, but anyway, he finally let her in the next morning and she got in, she got in that kitchen. She made him breakfast and she said, I love you, honey. He locked her out because she went to a church event. And I'm here to tell you it changed that man's life. How we talk to our spouse matters. And you can grandstand on your scriptures all day long That's and right. say, but he's unsaved. I have a right to get a divorce, but you better seek Holy Spirit on that before you do with God. Amen. Thing. Listen, we got to close. You are listening to WDRB Media, the voice of the community. You are listening to Better Together, yes. together with Sandy Renner and Alexis V. Wolf of the Fiery Sword Global Ministries and Sandy Renner Ministries. We are counselors and ministers and authors. If you need, to, if you need help with anything, listen, if you don't know the Lord, if today you've tuned in, you're like, I don't know Jesus. What are you talking about? Contact me, 803 238 Five one six six. Sandy Renner is eight zero three four one seven five four eight eight. We will love to hear from you. Love to hear from you. Listen, because we don't want you to live another second without Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are, if you are saved and you are lost and you're confused, I mean, if you're saved from hell and you're you're confused or you you've got a battered marriage and you don't know what to do, reach out to us. us. Email we'll us www.thefiery.sword.com. SandyRenner.net. Mm. Yeah. Reach out to us. We're on Facebook. Listen, get in touch with somebody. Go, go to somebody who can help you um, find Christ and then Amen. learn how to live in accordance with Christ Jesus. There is nothing 
like it. And it's easier than you think. It's so, oh my gosh, it's easy. We make it hard. Listen, we pray for you. Father, we ask that you touch every yes. listener, every person who's hearing. Bless them with every spiritual truth from the heavenly realm. Bless them with what they need, the touch of God today. Father, let them know that you are real and that yes, you are God Lord. and that you are in love with them. Father God, bless them right now that they may find the help that they need by someone who is led by your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Be blessed. Tune in next Sunday, 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, WDRB Media, the voice of the community on iHeartRadio. Yes. And until next time.